Now that PewDiePie has started using Linux on not one, but two of his personal computers, the year of the Linux desktop must surely be upon us. Thousands of you will be trying Linux for the very first time, so here are some steps for you to make that transition to the base Penguin OS as smooth as possible. Best piece of advice I can give is to try Linux before you actually install it. This is a feature that so many people don't even think about with an operating system, but Linux has had it for a long time. You can load most Linux distros off a bootable flash drive and then play around with them on your computer without removing any of your data. So this gives you the opportunity to get familiar with the software that ships with your distro and find alternatives if you're coming from Windows before you burn that bridge back to the Microsoft plantation, which leads me to choosing the right distro for you. This is probably the most overwhelming part of switching for newcomers because there's so many choices. And your first choice probably isn't going to be the last one you end up on. Distro hopping is a real thing and it's okay. But Linux Mint is a great starting point if you're switching from Windows. A big reason is because Mint is considered a just works distro. You can install it and start using it with no problems 99% of the time. But the biggest factor here for Windows users is that the Cinnamon desktop environment is laid out very similarly to explorer.exe or whatever Microsoft is calling the Windows desktop these days. And there's even themes for Cinnamon to make it look exactly like the Windows 10 or 11 taskbar, start menus, icons, and so on. And because you can customize literally everything in Linux, you're probably going to get into optimizing and ricing your desktop, as we call it, to make it as beautiful and efficient for your workflow as possible. And it's usually easier to go through a full customization on a bare bones distro like Arch Linux, but don't get the idea that Mint or any other of these just works distros are really resource heavy. You can see if I open up the system monitor here that Linux Mint is basically idling right now and using less than four gigs of memory. And actually it's not truly idling. I have several different Firefox tabs open and of course all web browsers these days and web, modern websites are relatively heavy, uh, but this is still about the same amount of memory or possibly even less than you would get from a modern Windows 11 desktop that's just idling with nothing else open. So even these all-in-one ready-to-go Linux distros are much snappier and take up way fewer resources than Windows. And the software on here is also a lot more minimal. You aren't forced to have Microsoft Edge on your computer. It comes with Firefox instead. Uh, you aren't forced to have WordPad or anything else that's going to take up space on your hard drive needlessly. And if you don't like any application on here, you can actually remove it. That's right, Linux gives you the freedom to do whatever the hell you want on your computer. And the low resource usage also makes Linux a great way to breathe new life into an old computer. Like if you have a laptop from the Windows 7 or even the Windows 10 laptop that couldn't be upgraded to Windows 11 for whatever reason, maybe it didn't support the right TPM modules, and so you went off and bought a new PC. Well, you can throw Linux on that old computer and try it out. Hopefully you're able to try it out and be satisfied with it before the return time is up for your new computer. So let me show you how you can actually get started with using Linux. So obviously you're going to need to download Linux Mint and there's actually a few different editions that you can download. Uh, the only real differences though is the desktop environment. So all of them are gonna have a Windows-like setup, but the XFCE edition is a little bit more lightweight than the Mate or the Cinnamon edition. So you may prefer to use this one if you're gonna be installing Linux to a much older system like four gigs of RAM or less, and you don't really care much about all the eye candy that comes with Cinnamon. Uh, but if you're used to the bloat of Windows and I guess the eye candy that comes with it, then Cinnamon is definitely the right one for you. And the other piece of this equation is Rufus, which lets you create bootable USB drives the easy way, just like the website says. So once you have this downloaded, you're going to want to run rufus.exe. 
And of course you wanna also have your ISO downloaded. Uh, usually when you go to download them, they recommend downloading it through a torrent, but if you don't have a torrent application, you can also download it from any of these mirrors here. Whichever one is closest to you will probably be the best. Now back in Rufus, you want to make sure that you select the right device. If you only have one external hard drive or at least no other like external devices connected, uh, then it should just read your flash drive. For some reason, it's reading this, which I think is actually my capture card. But anyway, just make sure that you choose the right one. I know it's my PNY USB right here. And then we want to go ahead and click this select button next to boot selection and choose our ISO. So it'll be Linux Mint 22.1 Cinnamon Edition. And this part is actually pretty important. You need to make sure you choose the right partition scheme. So if you're installing to a newer computer, and by newer, I mean probably newer than Windows 7. So like if it came with Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 11, GPT is gonna be the partition scheme you wanna use. If it's an older computer, so Windows 7 or older, then you're probably gonna wanna use uh, MBR so that everything boots and is compatible with your firmware. Um, and the volume label, you can change this here if you want. Uh, one other thing that you may want to change is the persistent partition size. So, like I said, you can use Linux off of a live USB, but if you set persistence, you can actually save data and new applications you install to that USB. Okay, without it, the way that a live system works is you can install new apps, you can you know download things, make documents or whatever, but all of that new stuff is going to get removed from the flash drive when you reboot. So if you wanna do like an extensive trial of Linux from the flash drive, go ahead and set yourself some persistence here. And uh, once everything is set properly, we can go ahead and start. This process is gonna take a couple of minutes, so Feel free to get yourself a coffee while you wait. Okay, now we're ready to give Linux a test drive, uh, but first we need to switch the boot configuration in our device's firmware. Uh, so normally the way people do that is when you restart the computer and it's first powering on, like when you see the splash screen, you press one of your function keys, usually F2, and then that brings you into your UEFI or BIOS menu. Um, but on Windows, there's potentially a more reliable way to do that if your computer starts up really, really quickly. Uh, so first thing you wanna do is open up your start menu and search for recovery options. And that's gonna open you up to this system recovery screen here. And you want to click the restart button next to advanced startup. All right, so when your computer comes back up, you'll see this screen here. You wanna click on Troubleshoot, click on Advanced Options, and then click on your UEFI Firmware Settings. Click Restart. And there you go. You can see I'm now in my UEFI settings and scroll over to boot and we just need to change the boot option one here from the windows boot manager to the uh pny or it's gonna have the name of your um flash drive here and it'll most likely say uefi before it save changes and restart and boom now we are using linux and check this out check out how quickly Linux Mint boots up compared to Windows 11. And also keep in mind that this is loading Linux Mint off of a flash drive instead of an internal NVMe drive. So it would be even quicker if we were booting, like if this is actually installed to the internal drive and you're loading it off of there. Um, I think this is even maybe a USB 2 drive. Oh no, it is a USB 3. All right, here we go. Our desktop is started up now. All right, I just had to make some quick changes so that uh, you could actually see my desktop because I had two displays connected, so this way everything is being captured by the capture card correctly. 
uh, yeah, this is the Linux desktop. So if we go into our, like, I guess you could call it the start menu here, uh, we can look at the software manager. And this has, this is basically like your repository where you can install software from. You can also do it from the command line if you want to be a cool guy, but uh, this way you have a GUI, right? Graphical user interface that you can access things from. So you can see VLC, Audacity, Spotify, Dropbox. A lot of the major applications that people use are already available on Linux, whether they're open source, proprietary, or whatever. Um, you may have to do some searching around for different um, different tools. Like for example, uh, LibreOffice or OpenOffice is generally the Office replacement for Microsoft Office. You can still use Microsoft Office on Linux, but you got to use the online version. Um, you may even be able to use it locally through Wine, but that's just going to be a pain in the butt because you're dealing with compatibility layers then. So make the switch to LibreOffice. Uh, if you're using the Adobe suite of tools, like with Adobe Photoshop, uh, generally the alternative people would use is GIMP or some other online service like Photopea. Uh, you could also use Microsoft Edge if you really wanted to on Linux, but most of the distros will ship with the Firefox browser. Um, and actually that won't really work if I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. So let me just go ahead and do that real quick. So boom, there you go. Uh, Wi-Fi is working flawlessly on Linux. Bluetooth also works. You know, most things these days, they just work on your Linux computer. And the same can be said for a lot of games too. Like for a long time, one of the big reasons that gamers were not using Linux is, oh no, my games are not gonna work. But now that the Steam Deck is out and people are actually targeting Linux when developing their games, more of them are working natively every single day. And so when you're confident that Linux Mint or whichever distribution you chose is right for you, you can click on this install Linux Mint uh, application right here. And then this is going to walk you through the install steps to actually wipe your hard drive and put Linux on your computer and make sure that all your data is backed up, of course, from the Windows partition on your hard drive. If you plan to do a full wipe, you also could do a dual boot of your system if you have enough space, which means that you keep your Windows partition and then you install Linux alongside it. And that way you can switch which one you want to boot into from the UFI menu that I just showed you. And if you run into any issues, there is a Linux Mint forums. Um, and I think it's actually bookmarked in somewhere. Uh, no, it's not. But uh, I think it's forums.linuxmint.com. Yeah, so you can look here if you need to sort out any technical issues on your Linux installation. And then if you choose Ubuntu, there's also Ubuntu forums and Arch forums, so on and so forth. Um, and actually, the uh, Arch Wiki is probably the best repository out there to get information about how to configure things on a Linux desktop or just any Linux machine in general. So that's a good reason why once you have some familiarity with Linux, switch to Arch and then you'll actually probably end up having a much better time. But that's it for this video, folks. Switch to Linux, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to like and share it to hack the algorithm. And check out my website, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount store-wide when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.